Gaza. Let me hear you if you are here to demand more of Congress. Well, we are joined today by a few more special guests, those who have the political will and the courage to speak out. We are here today with two members of Congress who have authored and endorsed the resolution to call for an immediate ceasefire. We are here as rising majority to offer our solidarity with those in Congress who dare to speak up and stand on the right side of history. So join me, please, in giving a warm round of applause to Congress people Rashida Tlaib and Cory Bush. Congresswoman Cori Bush. And I bring you greetings from St. Louis, Missouri, where I represent in the United States Congress. I love you. And I'm here because one thing that I learned many years ago was that presence matters. I learned that when we say we support or we say we stand, showing up is one of the best ways you can do it. Even if it means you get attacked, even if it means some folks say your name and try to scandalize you, villainize you, demonize you, showing up makes it can make all the difference. And so because I learned during Ferguson, when so many of our Palestinian brothers and sisters and neighbors came and showed up on the ground because they wanted to support black folks standing up saying, no longer will we live under this oppression. And they stood up, some of whom are here today. And they said, we will lock arms with you we will fight for your freedom and your liberty right here in this country. And that's something I'll never forget. And so it made me think about, Corey, where are you? How are you showing up for them? When I learned about the oppression, when I learned about the hurt and the harm that's happening, not only in the United States, but also in Palestine, I learned, show your body up. Put your body on the line. Be there, speak up, show up. And not only that, let them see your dark skin show up for them. Let them see this black woman show up. But you know, we should have to be here today. We should have to do this. We should have to have to demand peace, but that's what we're doing. We shouldn't have to press pause and say, hey, pay attention to us because we don't want our family members to die. Because we want freedom and self-determination and we are anti-war, we are pro-peace. We shouldn't have to do that today. But because of the violence against your families, because of the violence that's happening, the trauma, the death, we stand. You all have come together. And let me tell you, I know what it's like to be the one oppressed and have to show up for yourself and wondering who's going to stand with me, who speaks with us. Thank 
thank you for coming out anyway. I know you're in danger. We know that there is harm coming your way, but we also know that we stand together. You are not alone. We are standing with you, side by side, arm in arm. We are daring to take this tougher course of humanity and peace over that easier course of hatred and violence. We are here to affirm that you matter, your life matters, your legacy matters, your land matters, your family matters. All of it. We are out here demanding that the world and our government refuse to turn a blind eye to the collective punishment against Palestinians that has been happening over the last several days. We're out here showing that we are consistent in our love for all of humanity. All meaning all, meaning all of humanity. So we are calling for an end to the violence. We are calling out here for a ceasefire. Ceasefire now. Ceasefire now. multi-faith, anti-war, multi-generational coalition that's out here. So know that you have support, regardless of what they're saying. And I know last night we heard from the administration. <laughs> calling on Congress for more bombs and more weapons. Which we know will only lead to more violence and more death and more atrocity and absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not on our watch. Not in our lifetime. Not again. This is why my sister and I, representative to leave. This is why we came together and introduced the Ceasefire Now resolution in Congress. This resolution calls on the Biden administration to demand immediate de-escalation and ceasefire in Israel and occupied Palestine and to send humanitarian aid and assistance to the 2.2 million people under siege and trapped in Gaza and to save as many lives as possible. And so I'll close with this. I'll close with this. I took a moment this morning to think about what I can offer to this movement. What can I do? As one person, one individual, what can I bring? And there was this song that kept playing over and over in my head. And, I, and I'm a Christian woman, and this song was, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you, my soul I give to you. Lead me, basically is what it's saying. So I want to put that out to every person. Even if you feel like all I can do is show up. All I can do is donate to somewhere. All I can do, no, each and every one of us has a place right now. You are here for such a time as this. You are here because you have something to offer to save lives, to save your families, to save our families. You have something to bring to this movement for true freedom and self-determination. So sit with that as you stand out here today and think about who am I and what am I and what do I bring? Because this moment, this moment is yours for the taking. We will win peace. We will win peace. We will win peace. We will win peace. Cease fire now.